Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another movie discussion. For today's discussion, I'm going to be talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's going to be a spoiler discussion all around, but in general, first and foremost, I'm going to give my general thoughts, and then I'll keep it non-spoilery, but then I'll make it clear when I'm definitely entering spoiler territory. So give me a little bit of heads up. Obviously, you can uh, check out the time codes to kind of jump around to different topics and discussion points that I bring up during this discussion. So first and foremost, in general thoughts, I really like the movie. I think it's very, I think it's great. I know a lot of people have very mixed feelings about the movie. Um, I don't get that, but I guess it's like, right, it's not kind of the, all the, the scampy adventure that typically the Ant-Man movies have been. It, it is such an interesting contrast that like a lot, I mean, maybe that's a detriment to the movie for some people is that how much this movie is like, it's, it's basically an Avengers movie almost in an Ant-Man movie. But it's also like, I mean, it feels like any other bigger movie. But it's like, because Ant-Man movies have always been these small adventures. Whether it's one and two, like the fact of the matter is that this movie, it's not even really a spoiler. I think this was actually known before the movie even came out. But like, only like a fr like the smallest fraction, I'd say like only like what, like maybe 10 minutes of this movie takes place outside the quantum realm. Like the rest of like the rest is like a hundred percent in a quantum realm. So for one, being able to kind of explore that was pretty dope. But I, I think the movie just visually, it's just, I think it does a really good job separating itself. I know some people just from the trailers alone were comparing it to guardians, but I think it does a good job of the spectacle and scale showcasing and the colorful bright colors of it all makes it seem. And, Cause I think it dives into the alienness of it probably even more so than Guardians does because you get like all these different different species and stuff but yeah you don't get to like know all of them but you really it, it just it just and I guess it's because that contrast of it being an Ant-Man movie where things are small where things are now things are kind of bigger and the stakes are higher than they've ever been before I think that is kind of like a nice contrast and our villain without really getting into it I think uh they did a stellar job of our villain getting a different uh flavor with this particular villain and how they handled it i mean once again the end result was always going to be yeah no matter how this plays out we know what the future holds so uh there were some interesting developments i knew there was like one character i knew that was in this just because you know i follow enough like movie and tv show news to know that but i was like it's still interesting just hearing other people's perspectives. I didn't laugh as much. It is still kind of jarring when you see one certain character. I'm like, oh, that's a bit jarring, but... Um I mean, at the heart of all of this, like it is once, and I think these the Ant Man movies kind of do. I think they do this nicely. They are kind of once again their little their little romps, their little adventures, but they also have like a lot of heart to them as well. So I I, I think that's actually a pretty uh, a pretty dope aspect of it. Uh, I mean, just in general, I really liked it. I'm just going to jump into spoilers after this because there's not too much to really say and dent and there's no point in dancing around so much. So just in my general thoughts, I really liked it. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, kind of formulate your own opinion. Just because I really liked it doesn't mean you will. I just think the movie is kind of out there in some regards and maybe that's a little too much for people or because I know for some people, maybe it's like messy in some parts but maybe it still sticks to landing i don't know i like i said through and through i really enjoyed it, it was fun but i feel like it isn't as jokey as other ant-man movies are so once again once if you haven't seen the movie yet go formulate your own thoughts obviously and you know maybe, maybe you'll completely agree with me maybe you'll completely disagree that's fine but like i said letting you know here and now going forward we are going into spoilers you have been warned Okay, so first and foremost, going into the whole situation with um, with Scott, uh, obviously kind of introduced to his life, the fact is, it's like, hey, I'm an Avenger, everyone knows me. Once again, the gag that was in the trailer, too, of like, oh, thank you, Spider-Man. It's like, not the right bug guy, but okay. Which, once again, I love that we're ga making these Spider-Man gags, especially, it's kind of sad, because you, it's just a constant reminder of like, right, no one knows who Peter Parker is. Even though Avengers who knew who Peter Parker was don't know that he's Spider-Man. Peter Parker doesn't exist, so it just makes it even sadder every time. Because it's the second time we've had Spider-Man brought up post No Way Home. First being Multiverse of Madness, now this, so... Uh, but either way, Scott's living up his life. He's he's loving it. He's enjoying it. The fact of the matter is, you know, he never thought his life would be what it is. And the fact is that it's like, oh, he celebrated at Baskin Robbins where he got fired. And I love that he's shaking like his 
former boss's hands and his boss is like holding on tight. He's almost like, you let go, guy. Uh, uh, the fact is, Hope is taking a lot of like the pin particle stuff and she's trying to fix the world like like so like a lot of the homing st uh, like a home situation because they do they do dive into it a little bit because it is continuously even at this point still a background thing i want to say falcon and winter soldier was the first one to really introduce like obviously so many people being displaced because of the blip those who were going for five years and came back and oh your home isn't your home or those who did stay and just, you know, so that whole conundrum of it and Hope is doing so much to try and like better the world. And I love that that in itself is kind of a conundrum when it comes to Scott and his daughter, which she's kind of all like getting arrested for him. It's like, no, 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 don't do that. I should be the only criminal in the family. So like, I don't want you following my footsteps because apparently she ended up shrinking a, um, a uh, police car because they disrupted like a, a peaceful protest, which is like, I understand where Scott's coming from. It's like, I mean, first and foremost, he didn't really go into this. And I think that speaks volumes about Scott because Scott could be like, hey, your actions are a reflection of mine. It's like, no, he's just more so worried. Like, I don't want you to like throw away your future. I don't want you to end up like, you know, I went away for a while. I don't want that for you. And regardless of how she'll, how uh, Cassie will be like, because she made a snide remark about like, yeah, you've never really been there before for me. And he was like, ow. She's like, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. He's like, no, it's okay. It's like, the sad thing is on some level, she did mean that. And it's understandable. I mean, you missed out so much on your, your life with your dad. Not once, twice. He was in jail while you were growing up a little bit. Then while you were growing even more in those years, you needed him the probably even more needed him the most. He was stuck in the quantum realm for five years. So it's like, she has some resentment towards that and it's like understandable so like because it you know he's like he didn't mean to be the absentee father he was and I, I think that's such an interesting dynamic they play with because she's all about like hey we we can do good we can change you you're like living it up as an avenger you're selling these books and stuff like that it's like yeah you're mr popular and everything but the fact of the matter is and part of me wonders like obviously we got the miss marvel like podcast thing but i'm curious like all we got is the book uh well, that could have been like what the podcast, no, no, because I, I don't know if the podcast is just him reading sections of the book, what he was listening to, where Cassie and Hope were like, wait, what are we doing? He's like, oh, I'm sorry. He's like, no, that's, that's not me listening to that's, that's the radio. And she's like, can you turn it off? Turn it up? Okay. I can turn it up for you. Uh, but uh, part of me was wondering if that's not the podcast, maybe post all of this, he does do the podcast. Maybe that's, maybe this kind of takes place before Miss Marvel does in a, in a, in the grand scheme of the timeline. Nevertheless, uh, when that's all said and done, uh, getting back to the point I was making, it is this interesting thing where Cassie feels like her dad isn't doing enough. It's like, yes, you saved the world. And even Hank and Janet and Hope are playing into the whole, like, oh, did you? Oh, man, we didn't even know that you saved the world. It's like, maybe you should write a book about it. He's like, ha ha, I get it. I even love, she's like, yeah, you're the one that, didn't you want to, you know, go to Germany to, uh, uh, you know, fight Captain America. He's like, no, no, I went to fight with Captain America. Why? Fighting Captain America? That's crazy. <laughs> I wonder if that's supposed to be like some slight against Tony to some extent. Like, oh, everyone that was Team Tony, you're crazy for going against Captain America, you know? So I think that's kind of neat. But it's like Cassie feels like her dad isn't doing enough. It's like helping people. But for Scott, it's like... It's like, he, you know, it's like, I saved the world, but it's like, yeah, but what, it's a thing of, what have you done for us lately? You're living off the celebrity. It's, I don't think it's the inflated ego. It's, it is a thing of like, hey, I saved the universe. I never thought I could be a part of something like that. And I was, and I think that in itself plays really nicely into this. I think the thing is, Scott didn't ask for any of this superhero stuff. He, once again, stumbled back afterward into it. Like, you know, it took Hank going after him to kind of put him in this situation. And then it's like, even the, the same thing with like everything in two, it's like, that was more so Hank and Hope. It's like every time, uh, Sam kind of one that dragged him into the civil war situation, which she was gladly happy to be a part of that, but he stumbled his way through a lot of this, you know? Um, so I'm not saying Scott hasn't tried to do the right thing when the situation calls for it. Yes, but he never goes completely out of his way to do the right thing. He just stumbled his way into being in a position where he's like, right, well, I'm going to do the right thing. So I think that's the thing of like, once again, Scott just, he dealt the hands, he played the hands that he was, the cards that he was dealt. 
And, but for, um, for Cassie, it's like, I want you to do more. Like, you could do more. And that's why her and Hope and even Hank were working on this whole um, Quantum Realm stuff. It's like, right, let's learn more about it. Which, obviously, uh, Janet was not too keen about that idea. And it, you know, it turned out, like, she has told them nothing about her years. Even though she was in there for 30 years, she didn't tell them a lick about her experience in there. Because she wanted to forget it. Understandable, but still. And because she did that, like, she, and that's the thing. It's a kind of a catch-22. It's her trauma. It's her complicated circumstances. She shouldn't have to talk about it if she doesn't want to. But the problem is because she decided to bottle all that up, try to leave it behind now that she was going, eventually it caught up with her. And it's like, once again, it's they would have never went looking in the quantum realm if she had told them. But once again, it's her pain and her trauma. It's like, who is, who are we to be like, oh, we, we demand an answer for you. It's like, they wouldn't have gotten blindsided the way they did. But yeah, they go deeper. They get sucked into the quantum realm because basically, um, Cassie sent a signal because for her, it's like, hey, we can send a signal and we can have that information brought back to us. And the sad thing for her, it's like, if I had this a couple years ago, I could have potentially tracked you down because it's their way to map out the quantum room because it's so massive. They don't have a really good picture, a layout, a map of it. And she's like, yeah, I could have found you all those years ago. So that's the extra motivation of like, I guess, like on the off chance it ever happened again. Like, you know, just I think that also plays a little bit to this episode. I mean, episode, this movie of like the theming of regret. It's like, right, wishing we had done things differently, but can't really go back in time to fix it. Can you? You know, that's a whole uh, conversation in itself. But uh, Cassie and Scott end up meeting some of the inhabitants, uh, different creatures, uh, which I love that they make the point of like, yes, yeah, some of them look human, but they're not actually human. I guess it's like, yeah, any like it just kind of like this, the same thing as like the, uh, oh God, what's their faces? Names from Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, oh my God, what, what's your face's names? The Nova Corps, right? Like, yeah, they look like Earthlings, but they don't. So it's like, hey, it's like, oh, there's, and I love, there was that, what was that creature's name? Was its name Veb? I saw uh, David Desmolchin's name in the credits. I was like, wait, I know you guys weren't in it. So who, I was like, oh, he must have voiced somebody. He's like, he must have been the main, like, gooey alien. It's like, oh yeah, drink me. So you can understand our, like, everyone's language. But I think that's his name. Uh, looking at the cast, his name's Veb. I think that's the guy. Um, if it's not, I, I do apologize. I could be uh, wrong in that. But like, uh, he made a whole point of like, wait, how many holes do you have? And then, uh, oh God, uh, William Harper, William Jackson Harper's character, uh, I think it's Quaz said like, okay, he has seven holes. And I know Scott took a, like five seconds. And like, eh. I mean, he's like, yeah, you have seven holes. He's like, yeah, that, that, yeah, that sounds about right. Um, but yeah, there are people that have been, this whole realm has been conquered by Kang, because I, I I love that. Well, once again, if when we don't know this, what this quantum realm looked like before Kang, like it's like yeah, everyone had their own people, their own everything, kind of I guess like their own cities, kind of like their own countries, and those were all conquered, and they're just all surviving remnants left, kind of doing whatever they can to survive. Because uh, we meet some of those people, uh, Hope, Hank. And Janet meet another group, which I love. Uh, Janet had that encounter with that one dude. It's like, oh, I'm going to cut off your arm and then I'm going to stab you. And it's kind of like a, hey, hey, Like, it was kind of like a celebratory, like, like little exchange between them. And he gave them transportation. And, well, before we circle back to the uh, Scott and Cassie of it all, let's talk about Kang himself and Janet's connection to him. When she, we don't know if she ran into Kang immediately. Who knows like how long after being in the quantum realm she f stumbled across him. Uh, I wonder, did he actually get her before her or after her? You know, timey wiminess you never know, especially in the quantum realm with how the way time plays. We actually don't know how long they were in the quantum realm. It's like, couldn't have been that long. They, they, they didn't make a point of it, so it could be like, oh, they were in there for maybe a couple days at most. You know, it might not have been like a crazy amount of time. Either way, um, 
Janet met Kang, well, didn't really know him, and says, hey, you're a stranger, you have this ship that can travel the multiverse, and it's like, yeah, it could get you back to your family, and especially for her, it's like, hey, I found a friend, like the one friendly face I had found in this place where we can survive together, someone I can talk to, you know, she has so many regrets about not being there for hope, and it's like, right, I promised her I'd be back, and I lied to her, that's the last exchange between me and my daughter, a lie, and Kang is like, I'll get you back to her, and they repair the machine, they repair the the what is it the uh, multiverse uh, engine or whatever, and but it's connected to King's mind. And the moment uh, Janet touched it, she saw in his mind, and it's him slaughtering so many people. And he and I love the like the whole he didn't even put up a front. He just kind of went his demeanor changed. He's like, all right, let me explain myself. It's she's like, I've seen what you are. She's like, who is King? And he's like, who I'm supposed to be. So I'm, that is where we start getting into this interesting territory of like, obviously we've already known that this wasn't going to be the Kang from Loki. Not, not even, not even talking about the one, he who remains that's dead. Not even that. Not even, this isn't, I don't even think this is, a, this is, no, not think. I know it's not even the same Kang from the end of Loki, the one that's in control of the TVA. It's not the same Kang. So this Kang, I guess, knows about his future. I mean, obviously he's from super far in the future regardless, but he... He knows enough about everything, and he's like, right, there's a great evil coming. And everyone's like, well, what is that evil? He's like, it's me, a whole bunch of me. He's like, I have to be Kang. I have to be the conqueror. I have to win because he has to be the one that conquers all. Like, it's like, once again, you know, you can only assume this is supposed to be post-Loki where uh, he who remains is dead and the, multi the, the timeline splintered off into the multiverse, and now all these other Kangs are at war with each other, potentially. Um... But for him, I mean, it's hard to say because the TVA exists out of, outside of space and time. So does the quantum realm, which might still imply, because the theory a lot of people have was, oh, could the TVA be inside of the quantum realm? It doesn't seem like that's the case. I mean, it could be in just another pocket dimension that's, you know, outside of space and time, or it could be in a different section of the, TV, of the uh, quantum realm they haven't quite cracked yet. I don't know. I, I feel like this is probably like, I mean, it's a universe in itself, um, you know, beneath and, you know, probably on top of another universe. So who knows how how deep and subatomic it can really, really go. So who knows what lies below this or is this the bottom? Have you hit bedrock? Is this the bottom of the quantum realm? You know, questions like that are still unclear. Um, nevertheless, understanding Kang's motivations is interesting because... Because I was like, yeah, why are you doing this? And for him, it's like, right, because I'm, in his mind, it's like, I am saving the multiverse. I am saving every, the time is broken and I can fix it. I'm the only one who can. I have to rise above every other version of me. I have to become King the Conqueror. So that's why I'm like, he must know on some level, like he must have met a different version of himself that says like, hey, one of us will rise above the others and will be the Conqueror. Like only one of us can be the actual Conqueror. We're all Kangs, but only one of us can be the Conqueror. But even, and that make, makes me wonder, Kang might not even be his name because he's like, that's who I need to be. So, this might be twice that we don't actually know his real, real name. It might not be till much. It might even be until Kang Dynasty that we find that out. But part of me wonders is, yeah, because like him, because Janet says specifically, not, who is the conqueror? She said, who is Kang? And he's like, that's who I need to be. So, like I said, I don't know if he ran into another Kang or whether he saw his own future or whether he's just, and because he, because he later on asked Janet, he was like, I never asked you. What was it that you actually saw? And she saw, I saw you as the monster that you are. So he knows what his future is supposed to be. I mean, because hey, I forgot, because this particular Kang, at the very least, I don't know if it's supposed to be applicable to all Kangs. He who remains, it makes sense. You were like, you were in control at the time. And maybe that's supposed to be like some future technology that allows him to be the one that can see all the time. Because I don't know if he was implying like he's the only king that was like that. We know he who remains basically saw the entire timeline and stuff like that, knew everything right now. And it's like, yeah, so that might be an innate ability in all of them, or it might be specific to the technology. Because I don't think it's just these specific kings. It might be every king knows time up to a certain point. And so maybe that's why he's like, right, I haven't seen what my future is. I just know what it is because it's like, yeah, it's hard. You know, he even talked to Cassie about it later on about the whole knowing the future and knowing how it all ends, you know. 
which I love that he didn't get in specifics about that. So keeping it vague enough that obviously the writers later on, it's like whatever future we want to concoct or we want Kang to know it's coming, we get to keep that vague until it's time for us to, you know, sprout it and re uh, reveal it to the audience. I love that he did the villainous thing of like, don't worry, I won't destroy your timeline. It's like, I wonder, does he consider their timeline broken or not? Like, would he? Because he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm fixing every other timeline. It's broken. Does their time non, top non, timeline not have a Kang is what I'm wondering. Or, I mean, that timeline of probably will eventually get a Kang. Once again, he's from like probably, like, at least in the comics, he's from like the year 3000. Or is it like, is he, was it like, no, it might even be further than that. Because isn't he from like the, isn't it the 30th century he's from or something like that? It might just be in the 3000s. I don't know. I don't, I'm not well versed in the comics enough to know that. Uh, that's just like little bits I picked up here and there from other people. But I mean, obviously he was saying that just so that Janet would help him get out. But I'm wondering like, I mean, I think even you can't trust anything that comes out of his mouth. I mean, he's, he's going to like, I don't think he's going to do what he who remains did where it's like, hey, because how he who remains did it didn't work well it all fell apart and now like the multiverse the multiversal war is about to start up yet again and so this king probably goes like no what i'm gonna do is rather than try to put it all in one timeline i'll just make it simple for myself boom 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 and blow up and destroy every timeline every other universe until this is all over and this is his way of saying you know and obviously janet's like you will be killing trillions of people over and over again but for him it's like it doesn't matter because he talks about sacrifices that are, are what he's lost but we never really got into that like was it someone you loved it had to be like because whatever it is the people who locked him here he was like it was super personal it's like what like either they were responsible for taking what was taken from him or he just lost it, lost it naturally because of other kings and just, I mean, it's all one and the same. We'll get to it later. But we know the people who locked him here were kings. Now, the question is, did they take all that from him, whatever it is that he lost? Or was it other kings? And while he was on his, you know what? Boom, boom, boom. I'm on my revenge tour. I'm killing. I'm slicing. I'm taking everyone out. These particular kings stopped him. Which I am curious. It, it is, we're jumping the shark a little bit, but I want to tie it all in. Because I brought up those kings it is a trio of Kangs in particular that seem to be in charge. Now, I, once again, not the comic book person, but I do know there is a council of reads. It's Reed Richard from multiple other universes that get together and kind of dictate, like, oh, what's kind of best. They kind of do some Illumin... They're basically in the same vein as the Illuminati. Um, so I'm wondering, are they, instead of giving us a council of Reed, we're getting the council of Kang? I don't know if that's already a thing in the comics or are they kind of tweaking the Council of Reed and making the Council of Kang type of situation. Because it seems like those three in particular are the ones that kind of called the shots. Why they are the ones, who knows. I'm curious, are they the supposed to be kind of like the, oh God, they might be. I'm, I'm blanking on their names now. It's the dudes from the TVA. The Timekeepers. I had to look that up. I, it's been a while since Loki, so I didn't remember. But now in retrospect, it's like at least one of them kind of looked very much like. That's why I'm like, especially because there's three of them. There's supposed to be four, which we still haven't gotten an answer on that. But I wonder, is, I wonder, could he be one of those? Could he have been one of the four Timekeepers? Because wasn't, wasn't there a fourth one instead of just three? I could be misremembering that. So now I'm wondering, could this Kang that we got in this movie have been the fourth that was betrayed by the other three? So, because remember, the timekeepers in the TVA were robots. And at the time, you're like, oh, was it all BS that he who remains spun to create the TVA? But now, now it could be they exist, but they're other Kangs. So they spun the story a little bit to make them something else when in actuality, they're all Kangs themselves. Don't know. We didn't get those answers. A lot of theorizing and spitballing on my part. So I, I do apologize. We also never really kind of went into it as well about when they end up meeting with the, um, when uh, Janet meets with her ally, um, Bill Murray's character, Lord Krylar. Um, I guess he ended up getting chomped at the end, which is very poetic. But he was an ally of Janet's. I thought he was actually going to have a bigger role in the movie. And it was like, oh, no, you were just some guy that 
she had a thing with, which I love uh, her and Hank talking about that later on. She is like, I was in here for 30 years. She's like, no, I understand. I was with someone too. It's like, Linda. And it's like, oh, what happened? It's like, it didn't work out. Why? She wasn't you, baby. I was like, oh, that's actually really sweet. It's also just interesting to know, like, oh. And I also love poor Hope talk because it's like, oh, I had needs. And Hope's like, ugh. And he's like, no, I understand it. I had, I uh, slept with a few, I slept a few times myself. And she's like, ew, I don't need to hear my about my parents' sex life. Especially because it's like, I mean, it's not like it'd be better if she heard about their, their, their sex life together. The last thing, it makes it even worse hearing about their separate sex lives. Uh... But yeah, Krylar ended up betraying Janet because for him, he felt like she did. Because it's like, you left us high and dry. You helped fight, you know, and it's like, oh. She even said it herself that it depends on who you ask. Some people might look at her as a freedom fighter. Other people might look at her as a terrorist, which I'm like, what else did you do? Because Janet did not really go into details about it. Krylar was about to go there, but we, what did she do? Like, she could have been like the self sat like, oh, whatever sacrifices we have to make to stop Kang, then so be it, you know? So it might be kind of that where she is willing to use and sacrifice anyone just because he's that great of a threat. She sees him for what he is and we have to stop him. No matter what, we can never let him escape the quantum realm. But, but... Her escaping, her not saying anything to anyone, left this entire realm to his wrath. He controlled them. He kills them. And it's like, it's like, why did you betray me, Krylar? It's like, yes, we went up against Kang, but he could be very convincing. So I did like that they enlarged the thing that he was eating. And now it's like, oh, it gets its payback now. Now it's bigger. And like, oh, you aren't just going to eat me. The thing actually looks super adorable, too, if it's like big, like big cartoonish eyes. And yeah, the last thing we see is it flinging around uh, Krylar. I can only assume either cracked him open or ended up slurping him down. Only poetically, considering he just ate one like a couple minutes before everything went down. So... On the other side of things, we had this uh, continue with the Scott and Cassie situation of uh, them kind of getting to know their uh, their situation and obviously hearing a little bit about uh, Kang. Uh, Quaz being the guy uh, reading people's minds. I love that whole bit of just kind of like, all right, can you stop thinking that? He's like, no, I'm like, oh, your head. I said, I wish my forehead glows. Like, no, you don't. He's like, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I just ended up saying that just because, you know, I'm awkward. And I don't know what else to say. But it's like, yeah, they come from the same world as Kang. And it's like, right, how do we know you're not just like him? But it's like, right, they don't know anything about Kang. So, and uh, once again, Cassie wants to help these people considering the circumstances they're in. Because it's like, hey, dad, you're an Avenger. Help them. But for him, it's like, this isn't our problem. It's like, for her, it's like, we, you shouldn't have to only help people when it becomes your problem. But once again, it's kind of been Scott's thing. Like the situations he's always been in is just because he's kind of forced into him. He makes the best of it and tries to do the right thing when the time comes, but he doesn't always actively go out of his way. It's just kind of, he usually gets dragged into the situation and then he wants to try to do the best that he can. He wants to do good. So, uh, Kang sent his army there. Uh, I love the, the buildings come to life too. It's like, wait, your buildings are out. It's like, what was it that being like wait your buildings aren't alive it's like oh that's your buildings are dead it's like oh that's sad it's like wow it's such a weird thing to see i even love later on you see it later on in the movie like when one of the buildings dies it's in the arms of another building i'm like that's it's such a it's like on on screen for like a couple of seconds but i'm like that's such a weird thing to see because they're sentient beings but uh we also get to see cassie uh showing off with her uh I was about to call her structure, stature suit. It's like, yes, I have my own suit. He's like, yeah, I can tell. But he's like, she's like, I know what I'm doing. He's like, really? Because it didn't seem like you knew what you're doing back there. He's like, you kind of have to jump and kind of enlarge. Like, you have to jump and punch. She's like, I, I did that. He's like, no, like this. He did it three times. He's like, see, did you see what I did? She's like, no, you were like this small. How was I supposed to see? He's like, I jumped and I punched. Like, come on, you know? Because I wonder, has she secretly been getting some training from Hope or whatever? Maybe like the most minuscule amount without letting Scott know what's what? Because obviously they were keeping a lot of st a lot of this hush-hush, you know, about her suit and her doing her own thing. Um, but then we also get a familiar face 
Darren returns as Moda. And obviously I heard people to like my right, like, it, I mean, it wasn't, it was like a few people in the theater, like, uh, quite a few, like on my row to my left and my right. I heard people cracking up on my right when they were like, when they saw, uh, Derek's face. Cause I was like, how are they going to do that? I think I saw like what it looked like without the mask on. I think I saw a glimpse of that on the internet, but yeah, it's, it's still, it's, it's a little jarring. Cause you're like, oh, it's weird because I'm only used to it in like video games and animation, specifically clay animation, because obviously the clay animation is closer to what he looks like in the comics. The one that's uh, on the Hulu series that was voiced by Patton Oswalt, that's kind of what I'm used to. So seeing like uh, Corey Stroll's face kind of stretch like that, it's like, oh, what happened to you? It's like, oh, you did this to me. Kang found me and made me into the ultimate. It's like, oh, Modoc, I get it now. It's an acronym. He's like, well, if it really, uh, it'd be like Modoc or something like that, because he's like, there's actually an F in there. So he got. He's like, yeah, like I'm the bad guy. Uh, I, I'm going to be turned into the ultimate weapon. He's kind of the ultimate lackey. I'm not well for other than like the TV show, like, um, I don't have, and obviously that's a very, like, robot chicken style approach to, like, Moda. I don't know, like, I, I think he's typically a top-tier villain. I, I could be mistaken. But yeah, like, obviously in this, he's relegated to just, like, the psychopathic hunter uh, killer role, you know? So they all ended up getting captured and taken by Kang, and he ends up uh, explaining himself a little bit. It's like once again, it's like, oh, I'm an Avenger. He's like, are you an Avenger? Have I killed you before? He's like, I don't know. He's like, it all kind of blurs together. Like you're, not, you weren't the one with the hammer, right? He was like, that's Thor. I understand why you would kind of get us confused. We have the same body type and everything. Because obviously for Scott, it's just kind of like because he never found out about the multiversal angle of it all. Uh, sh like it's kind of explained to the others, but even then, like none of them really know the full scale of it. Like. Um, I mean, he explained it. He's like, because it's like, oh, what's that bad thing coming? And, you know, it's like, what, once again, it's me, a whole bunch of me's. So that's all the explanation they got. But for Scott, it's like, that didn't make any sense to him. So he didn't really latch on to it. So what he needs from Scott is, and it's like, yeah, you don't get this for me. I'm going to kill your daughter. Uh, Because he has like a whole bunch of tech. So it's like, he's not powerful. Like his suit just has like a whole bunch. He has like a whole bunch of tech. And sadly, Janet, when she helped restore the ship and everything, ended up helping restore his armor and all the tech in it. So like the fact is he can like, has like almost like this telekinesis where he can like crush your body. Because he's like squeezing on like their arms and stuff. And it's just like, man, you seem super overpowered. It's like, yeah, it's like super advanced tech. You can't really do too much against um, he kind of makes them seem like nothing when he like literally swats them like flies. Um, but when it's all said and done, Scott has no choice but to take, I was like, fine, I'll do this job for you. And it's retrieving, uh, the multiverse engine. It's basically been expanded because Janet had no other means of stopping him other than she ended up, uh, using the PIM particles on it. And it's in a, this large unstable state that it has to be shrunk down again and you use the PIM particles to shrink it again. So that's all he, he needed one of them. If it wasn't going to be Janet, he needed, uh, now he has a leverage against, um, Scott to do it. So Scott goes in there. I love each other. Hey, Derek, uh, Derek, <sighs> Moda. Yeah. Um, God, what was the, a possibility storm that was interesting where he's splitting and he's like hey how do you know i'm the real hey how do you know you know everyone i'm the real one's like no i'm the real one i even look because like the real scott's the only one that can actually hear it they're like hey hey what what what's she what uh, what's he saying so basically all at once all these different re versions of yourself of all the different possibilities in your life and i think it is and i think maybe that speaks volumes that maybe across most possibilities like, it seemed like 99% of them, Scott becomes Ant-Man. Maybe the circumstances that led to him becoming Ant-Man is different, but there was the one uh, Scott that was still working at Baskin-Robbins that never became a hero, never became an Avenger. I mean, who knows? Some of those uh, Scots might not even be Avengers or something like that. So, 
And I just love like how the one, and I think that's so, so that my actually my my Uber Uber driver uh, when I was uh, going to the uh, theater was like, oh man, you're going to see Ant Man. He's like, yo, it's it's trippy. He's like, because he had heard about the mixed review thing too, but he's like, oh, I really like it. He's like, it's trippy. And it's like, I mean, the colorfulness of it all, like you know, plays into that. But especially with all these multiple Scots, and I love when Hope shows up. She's bumping into her stuff because there's so many of them too. And, like, they're all trying to do their best to, um, like, try to get to the device, but they're all kind of dying in different ways. Um, but ultimately, Scott gets buried by all of his other versions of himself, but then he hears his daughter's voice, because that's what brought him back uh, when he went to the Quantum Realm, when he went subatomic in the first movie, was... Cassie, she reached out to him and she did it again. And I love this whole thing. And now all the Scots start working together. Even Moda was like, "Wait, how'd you do that?" He's like, "We're we might we're all united by one goal, and that's to get back to our daughter." And they're like, "All right, get him up there." And they're all like, like piling up, like almost like World War Z. I'm making a reference to a movie I've never seen. I've seen the trailers for, but it's like, yeah, they're piling up like zombies, like from World War Z, and try to get the Scott. I love like Baskin Robbins Scots. They're like, "Yeah, go on, buddy." You got this. And he gets to the top. And you thought he was going to have his triumph moment? Nope. And the tower comes crashing down. Luckily, um, Hope got there. And it's like right in that moment, it's kind of like, I think the possibilities change. Because it's like, we are here together. Meaning there's only one possibility. So every other possibility vanished now that they're balled together. to kind of come back into one Scott and, uh, and um, Hope. And they end up shrinking... Um, the engine with a whole bunch of like pin particle devices. So later on, Janet's like, Oh good. We had the device. We need to get out of here. We'll come back and save Cassie's like, I get, I get that. But it is also a thing of like, did you really think regardless of it all, regardless of the danger, did you really think hope nor uh, Scott were going to leave um, her behind? I I'm curious. Like what, I don't think Janet would have done the thing of like, oh, we're never going back. It's like, no, we would have. But it's like, we need to make sure he doesn't get out of here first. Then we can come back. In. But also, you're leaving him to Cassie. Leaving Cassie to uh, to um, suffer under um, Kang's will, you know? So, he even said this line where he was like, she'll be better off without you. Which I'm like, we never got no context for that. But I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I guess it's a future thing of, or maybe it's just, I know enough about you, Scott. You were never there for your daughter, and she kind of turned out fine without you, in spite of you. And I, Or maybe it's just a future thing of, like, I know what her future holds for her, what she's capable of, and who she'll be. But, uh, yeah, she will be fine without you. Because, once again, he does know the future. Uh, he knows how this story ends. So, I guess it's a thing of, he knows how, yeah, like, she has to live in a world without you. Because, most likely, King's like, oh, yeah, I've killed all these Avengers. So, I've most likely probably, some version of me has probably killed some version of you. Or, this version of me has killed some version of you in some shape or form. So, so that might be just all that really is. You know, I didn't even really think about it until, like... Hank brought it up later on, where it's like all those ants showed up. I was like, right, this is an Ant Man movie, but there's been very few ants. It's like, yeah, they're show like all the ones that got sucked into the quantum realm. Basically, they aged like thousands of years, and it, and they grew in intelligence, and they basically built a society for themselves. And I love that he's like, I know where we come from. We're like socialism is a bad thing, but this we could all learn a thing, Dad. He's like, well, yes, these are my ants. I love it. And it's like, yeah, they're helping repair the ship so that they could go after, uh, rescue Cassie and Janet and stop Kang because they have to make sure he doesn't get out. And Cassie ultimately ends up, uh, working with, uh, after she freed, uh, Gentora, which I didn't talk about Gentora at all, which, um, I'm blanking on her character's name, but she was in Black Lightning, like the actress, uh, Kat, um, I, I think it's Katie, um, M. O'Brien. She was in um, Black Lightning, like two or three seasons, maybe. Might have been two seasons. Uh, she was kind of an antagonist. Uh, so I feel like there might have been something else. But it, I feel like there was something else I knew her from. But definitely Black Lightning. Um, but yeah, like Jintora is kind of like the leader of kind of like the rebellion. Or what? what's sort of a resistance. or sur purely survival group. And I love Cassie saving her being like, 
okay, uh, this is as far as I had a plan, but Jintora is the one with the plan. And it's like, all right, cool. Try and get a message out to everyone. It's like, now it's the time to come after Kane. We've been kind of beaten down for so long, but, you know, and her using that quote from her dad's book of like, yeah, you got to be there for the little guy, you know? It's something my dad taught me. I even love that even um, Hank referenced the book too. And it's like, wait, you read the book? He's like, yes, every damn word of it. So Cassie got the message out there, the resistance, everyone out there rose up and fought back. Even uh, Veb, who ended up um, full of holes, he's like, oh, oh. I was like, wait, are we really about to kill him? But he's like, I have holes. And then he just bulks up and just ends up swallowing all the bad guys. So it's like, oh, did not know he could do that. So, and I love Scott going gigantic and just like, like bashing his way through as uh, Kang is trying to do everything he can to leave. You know, it's like, right, I, I got to go. I got to go fight. I got to go win this war because my way, yes, it's the destructive way. Yes, there will be tons and tons of death. But if I if I don't win, another version of me win. Uh, you know, it's like there's always going to be uh, a worse devil down the road when it comes to me. You know, it, it's it's. I mean, I was about to say, it's interesting that we haven't come across, like, a good Kang. Maybe the argument is he sh who he who uh, remains might be the best Kang there is, and now he's dead. Literally every other Kang is worse than him. You know, there might not be any good... I mean, it might also be the thing of... I mean, this Kang could have been a good Kang at some point in time until he lost all that he lost, and it drove him to be the bad guy, to be the conqueror that he is. So... But it's not just uh, Jintora and all the armies like rolling together, fighting the enemies. Eventually, um, I love that the ants kind of roll through too in the in the final bout. But uh, yeah, I even love uh, Cassie going up against Modok and kind of taking him out as she uh, as she got giant too. And he's like, "Oh, come back here!" She just says, "Stop!" He's like, well, "What? What am I supposed to be?" She's like, "Just don't be a dick." He's like, "I I can't. I'm already. A, I think I'm already a dick." She's like. The fact is, you you can change, and you know you you can stop being a dick. You don't have to be a dick because it's like, I mean, I guess it's like arguably Derek lost a lot of who he was the moment he came to the quantum realm, and uh, Kang made him, gave him a new purpose, gave him a new, uh, made him into something else. So he kind of took upon that role because it's all he had for him. I once again, I I liked him getting angry because he, I mean we saw it throughout this movie because he who remains he was always so like oh because I know everything that's happening and he was so like uh once again it's just M Jonathan Majors being able to play that those characters differently the one from uh Loki being so playful and this one being like super hell-bent on revenge and just being like nah I'm a conqueror you know so just and it's their demeanors and how angry this version of Kang got when he's like, "You really thought you could stop me? That you could go against me? That's not how this ends. That's not how this plays out. You're the ones that are going to end up dead. So no matter what they did, they tried everything to go toe to toe with him, but uh, he still put up too much of a fight. I did skip over, but I did like Scott and um." Cassie being big and like, oh my god, it's like, and I'm so hungry, I know, right? It's like, I almost got this taste for a lot. He's like, yeah, I don't know what that's about. Um, but she ultimately, like, she ends up passing out because it's like, right, it took Scott a long time to get the use to that to figure that out too without passing out. So obviously, this is like her first time getting big. So he's like, oh, it's like hugging God. It's like I'm hugging Godzilla right now. It's like a really adorable moment. Um, But I love that the ants came through in the end, and there's the ones who like ripped into through Kang's technology and then ripped his armor apart. I was like, wow. I was like, when they were dragging him away, I'm like, are they literally just gonna rip him the pieces like off screen? But turns out later on he's back on just without his armor on. And I do love that the whole thing comes down to a knuckle brawl. I figured as much. I was like, right, everyone else is because that's the that's a classic like showdown thing of like, right, everyone go through the portal except for me. Oh, I'm gonna push Cassie through and me and Kang are gonna duke it out. He has no technology left, and so it just comes down to fist it comes, and he's he's whooping that ass when it comes to like Scott walked away jacked up. You know, Scott still held his own, but he couldn't, like, shrink or him bigging anymore. So it was just a, like, it was a straight up, like, knuckle brawl, which I'm like, I like it when, like, oh, we're so worn out. We lost all our power. All it takes is, oh, good old left and right. That's all we got, you know? 
I think that's I I love I always love that for a final battle, just being like, nah, let's go like we're not even like we're just fisticuffing this right now. So once again, Scott got his ass handed to him. He got in some good licks and stuff, but it's like, nah, it's like because he's like, you could have just walked away. All you had to do was turn the other way, but for Scott's like, I, I can't. Once once I once I'm there and once, once I was here, there were, there was no turning the other way. The fact of the matter is I wasn't just gonna walk away and go home after all of this. You have to be stopped. And it's like, right, you thought you could win, and he's like, I don't have to win. I just have to make sure we both lose. And Scott activated. The, 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 I thought what was going to end up happening was Scott was like, I was like, whoa, is, is Scott actually going to like make the ultimate sacrifice and get stuck here again? And it's like, yeah, just to make sure that Kane can't get out. Luckily, Hope came through and obviously she still has some charge left. It ends up blasting Kane and he has no defense against it and ends up getting sucked into the... Um, the multiverse engine. I guess it kind of just ripped, straight up just ripped his particles apart. They even, the other Kings even say it at the end. It's like, oh no, he's straight up dead. And I was like, wow, it's like, is, um, Scott and, um, uh, is Scott and, um, Hope just stuck there? Cause it's like, right, you came back from me. He's like, wait, are they, it's like, yeah, everybody's okay. And he's like, you came back from me. She's like, of course I did. I was like, oh, I was like, that's really sweet. It's like, I'm, because I think it's also for the, Aspect of like, right, they were dust at the time, but it's like, yeah, Scott was stuck in a quantum realm alone, and I think Hope didn't want to take the chance he might be left alone on his own again. It's like, you don't, I don't want you, because my mom was already in here alone for 30 years, not alone alone, but still, and the same thing, like, you were in here for five years, straight up alone, because you had no interactions with, like, this lane of this quantum realm, so... But, you know, um, everyone walks away free at the end. Like, they, they saved the day, and everyone in the quantum world is now finally free from Kang. And, uh, obviously, they were able to get things opened up on their side uh, on uh, with Hope. Uh, with uh, Hope and Scott were able to go back home. I was like, wow. I, I was like, are we going to end this here with them just stuck in the quantum realm? I was like, nope. Because I thought at that point, it's like, oh, like, is that why, like, Cass is going to have to step up even more as, like, a, a young Avenger or something? But, no, they came through and it's like, oh, everything's great. Everything's fine. Scott's going up back to his life. Everything's honky dory But then he was like, I mean, we did kill him, right? It's like, yeah, you killed one. He's like, what was that greater threat he was talking about? Uh, why do I, is this actually over? He's like, no, 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 put it out of your mind. And he's trying to have fun, but he can't help but being like, this, is it really over? And it's like, no, it's not. This is just the beginning. I mean, arguably, from what... This was, wasn't was even the beginning. I did love, once again, the um, two post-credits. The first one being the whole, hey, let's uh, gather every Kang in the multiverse and let's... What their ultimate plan... I mean, their plan is what it is, so... Are they all going to storm one particular timeline or something? Or, I, I don't remember them explain. maybe they did explain it, just, it's been a while now, so I don't remember off the top of my head what they had planned bringing, because it's like, well, if we left them all to their devices, they're going to, they're going to cause massive issues, so let's bring them all in, so that we can, I don't know if it's going to be like a, kind of almost an invincible type of situation of, yeah, uh, a calling of sorts is going to happen amongst the, the, um, the Kangs, or is it just going to be like, no, we're all going to be, a, once again, where I said like, it was a council of Kang, this is going to be the council of Kang, but on a whole other level, well, there's still going to be the core council, but it's like, right, we're all leading the charge, rather than us all being individuals, we are going to work as a well-oiled machine, maybe, I'm probably missing a complete mark, but like I said, I, I don't remember the dialogue of that um, ending uh, I just I'm remembering the second one a little bit more, which seems like it is straight up a scene taken from season two of Loki of Loki and um, Mobius there seeing a version of Kang in the past, which is interesting. So it's like, is that that Kang has to be a time traveler too, right? It's not like he's a Kang, but he's in whatever era that is. It's like, no, he had to go back in time. And Loki scared him because it's like, right, that guy. But Mobius is like, is that really the guy you're supposed to be scared of? He's like, yes, you have no idea how terrifying he is. So obviously setting the stage that the next time we will be seeing Kang will be Loki. I mean, I guess not less, I doubt he's popping up in Guardians Volume 3. 
Maybe the Marvels, but once again, we don't know the dates of everything. Like, we don't even know when Secret Invasion's coming out. Might not be any king in that. Might be some in the Marvels because of the cosmic element of it. But, once again, that also depends on when Loki comes out. So, how many kings are we going to end up getting in Loki? Is it the one that's taking over the TVA at the end? I mean, that's probably not the one that's there, is it? That has to be, like, a different one. So... I think Jonathan the Majors will probably be able to... Like, it's definitely going to be interesting seeing him getting to play all these different uh, Kangs going forward and what that's going to look like. Um, I wonder, I doubt we're completely done with the Quantum Realm. I'm, I'm sure I'll, that's going to come back in some shape or form, but I'm not sure how or what that's going to ultimately be. Um, but I also love that it's like a... Oh, it's not... Oh, um... Very much like Thanos, it's like a Thanos will return, it's like Kang will return because he's going to be obviously the major continuous through line. Because obviously that first post credit was like very set up for like, well, content well, the second one was more so about Loki, but the first one I think is just about the overarching multiverse saga um, arc plus specifically building towards Kang Dynasty. So I do love the overarching thing of, yeah, the little guy came out on top in this situation, even when the odds were stacked against them. But it is still that thing of, yeah, you, you won the battle, but have you won the war? No. Because you don't even know the war that is breathing down your neck. Because even Scott started being like, wait, did I actually do the wrong thing? Should I have let him live? It's like, that's the catch-22 of this. It's like, you know, I mean, if, like, if Sylvie and, like, if the Loki situation didn't play out the way it did, if they had let Kang stay where he was, what the, the end result would have been like, hey, we're going to be one particular timeline, but it's like, right, you also, the guy's a madman. Yes, he had his reasons and there was logic behind it, but it still doesn't change the fact is you can't trust the guy. And so what things would have been like if Sylphie hadn't killed he who remains, you know, what that end result would have actually looked like. Like, like I said, it's the whole Kang of it all is a catch 22. It's like, even like, there's no winning without losing. It's like, yes. What if you hadn't killed this Kang? He would have went out there conquering and he would have destroyed every timeline would destroy the multiverse. It's like, so is he the only one that could have stopped every other? Maybe you need a Kang to help you stop every other Kang, but what's to say the Kang that helps you doesn't end up becoming the conqueror himself? You know, it's like there's no winning in this. It's a lose-lose type of situation. So that's what makes it so interesting of like, how do you fight an enemy that's literally like spread across the multiverse, each one just as duplicitous and as dangerous and as evil as the other? You know, they prove to be the biggest threat in the entire multiverse. Oh, Thanos? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Like, you know, Kang, with who and what he is and what he's accomplished showcases, hey, he makes Thanos' decision to wipe out half the universe look like child's play. So, we'll ultimately have to wait and see, you know, once again, what the future holds. When will the Avengers unite? What the Avengers roster will look like? What Kang's... Uh, future in this saga will continue to look like. Uh, when's the next time we're going to see any Ant-Man characters? Uh, you know, whether it's uh, Scott, uh, Cassie, Hope, Hank, or Janet. Um, we know Ghost... Well, there were supposed to be some changes to the... Well, at least that was a rumor. I don't know if anything's official about the... Um, oh, God. The Thunderbolts lineup. We know Ghost was a part of that. So... Maybe we'll get if because I don't know if it was like a scheduling thing with like um, Hannah John Common. Like I think she was the one that was rumored not to be able to be in the movie anymore. I don't know. Once again, that was a rumor a while back, and I don't I don't know the validity of validity of that. So she's kind of our tie to the Ant Man movie. So maybe we'll get some because the last time we saw her was Ant Man and the Wasp. So at the like very end. So we don't, we haven't seen what she's been up to since then, so. Okay, so I actually don't know where this is going in the review or spoiler discussion because I'm recording this after the fact because I completely forgot to talk about Modoc's death. The fact of the matter is he actually helped kind of deliver a fatal blow, at least to take down 
Kang's tech, it ended up le leaving an opening for the ants to kind of rip his armor apart. So, sacrificed himself. I was like, hey, just didn't want to be a dick anymore. And I love that it's just like everyone finds out about him at different points in time. Obviously, Cassie and, um, Cassie and, uh, Scott found out about him first. Hank all had their interactions except for Janet because it makes sense because Janet wouldn't know him so why would she have any interactions and then while he's dying Hope is like wait like what wait what happens like don't worry I will explain everything to you later and he's just like oh I was kind of a good guy in the end it's like yeah you you did it man he's like yeah uh we were always like brothers he was like what we were? I was like, I love that. It's like, because even Scott's like, no, we weren't. We weren't even that close in the first movie. And they also touching him with the little hand. It kind of reminds me of that scary movie thing with uh, Chris Elliott's character. No, yeah, Chris Elliott's character. But, oh, with my strong hand. You know? Because didn't he touch someone in the face? Wasn't that Chris Masterson he touched in the face? Because I was like, yeah, that's Chris Masterson in a movie. I was like, wasn't it him or was it someone else that he touched in the face with a little hand and they didn't like it? It kind of reminded me of that. I know you forgot the fact that he started making fun of like like the little little lanky little legs that Modoc had. But it's also like, yeah, at least I died being an Avenger. And they're just him and Hope looking at each other like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you you died being an Avenger because I'm the one that can really give you the authority of being an Avenger. And he, he died. And it's like, oh, that is it's kind of sad. He did help in the end. But I mean, it's like, you still were a crappy person. I mean, because even Cassie brought up at the beginning of the episode, I keep saying episode, at the beginning of the movie, she was like, yeah, my life has never been normal considering like a guy in a yellow bug suit tried to kill me. It's like, eh, and he came here and he ended up helping in the end. Doesn't make up for all the crappy stuff he's done as, you know, as both himself and then as Modoc. But still, I just thought that was so interesting. Also means, well, potentially we will ne never get Modoc again. I mean, everyone always, that's always a lot of people's biggest issues with the MCU is how it kills its villains. That's what makes Kang so very unique in that regard. You can kill as many versions as you want. There's always going to be some version until you wipe them all out. That's a whole thing, but... Um, the fact is, this might be the only time we get MODOK, unless we get MODOK from a different universe, unless they do that, but I don't see them doing that. It's most likely going to be like, yeah, it was a one and done. So, I mean, I mean, technically not, because it's technically going to be a one and done with, um, with him from, uh, the first movie, but making him come back in the third. So technically got two movies. I'm curious, was that always a plan to make him MODOK, or was that just something they figured out along the way? They're like, oh, we want to do MODOK? Oh, this is how we do it. I, I don't know if they thought that far in advance, because it's not, the, the first Ant-Man movie was, what, eight? Came out eight years ago? Because it came out like 2015. It also, for, it's also in a weird spot. It in, it in, um, Phase 3 did a weird thing where, like, you don't end on an Avengers movie. Like, the last movie of Phase 2 is Ant-Man. It, it comes out after a, uh, Age of Ultron. And then, obviously, uh, Phase 3 ended with Spider-Man uh, Far From Home. I mean, that makes more sense. It's kind of an epilogue in that regard. Ant-Man was just kind of its own thing tacked on at the end of uh, Phase 2, which is just kind of interesting, so... But my point is, like, it's been eight years, so I don't know if they really planned it that far in advance. They were like, maybe they were going to include MODOK at some point in time with the Quantum Realm stuff, but maybe they didn't have the uh, idea that Course Show was going to return as MODOK, but whatever the case may be. I keep forgetting, the character's name is Derek, right? Is that the character's name? I keep wanting to say Derek, but all I can remember is Course Show, the actor who actually plays him. Either way, like I said, I have no idea where I'm going to end up placing this in the review, but we'll find out when I edit it, so... I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to talk about. I'm sure there's plenty of other things. Maybe I'll add some stuff if something comes up later on, because this won't be going up until Friday, just to go ahead and give myself time to like edit this and everything. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, at the end of the day, I thoroughly enjoy the movie. Regardless, I knew I was going to enjoy it regardless of mixed reviews and stuff like that. I'm the person that's kind of liked every, not kind of, I straight up have liked everything in the MCU. I know people have their qualms with different stuff, this and that, but still... Um, I'm excited to see, once again, where things kind of go with go for it with Kang. And also curious what a potential Ant-Man 4 would look like. Or will we not get an Ant-Man 4? Uh, that, that's definitely going to be interesting to see what the future of um, future of all of this uh, looks like going forward. 
Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.